Okay, so um, so I guess we kind of went through Genesis chapter four. So we'll try to get into chapter five now today. Is that what Brother Keith did just last week? Did he get into chapter four and finish it up, Blake? Did he get into, did he get into chapter five? Okay, good. Well, uh, we'll read a bit here and see how far we can get. That uh, this is the book of the generations of Adam, in that in the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. So again, we recognize even that idea of Mr. and Mrs. Harden or Mr. and Mrs. Adam, whatever. It, it goes all the way back to the beginning when God made Adam and Eve. Then again, that the woman assumed the man's name. See? And called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. So sure enough, we see that that image of God had been lost and when man began his children they were, took on his image, the image of their father not the image of God of course though they had been made in the likeness of God in the beginning and the days of Adam were after he had begotten Seth were 800 years and he begat sons and daughters and all the days that Adam lived were 930 years years and he died which is plenty long enough amen, <laughs> amen. so acts or i mean Gen genesis 5 5 we see the first natural death being recorded mm -hmm. because of course five is the number in the bible oftentimes for death sometimes it's the number for grace mm -hmm. but it's also the number for death but i guess it depends on what you do <laughs> if you choose grace or not amen and um, so we see that he finally died and Seth lived 105 years and begat Enos and Seth lived after he begat Enos 807 years and begat sons and daughters and all the days of Seth were 912 years and he died now you can get a whole lot done in 900 years <laughs> and that's why you know we should not be surprised that the antediluvian people, the people before the flood. If you could live 900 years, you'd be pretty smart. Because again, each man could stand on the shoulders of the next man and when it would be, come to smartness, there's no wonder, I have no doubts, that the people at the time of the flood were smart as we are today. Now, we don't want to think that. Somehow we want to think we're smarter than everybody else. We've got nanotechnology. We've got all this advanced stuff. We've sent a rocket to the moon. Blah, blah, blah. Aren't we so intelligent? Aren't we so smart? But the truth is, no, we're very stupid and dumb because we still can't figure out how these men built those pyramids before the flood <laughs> and all the other giant monuments that we find all the way around the world that to this day no one knows how they did it and why they're there and uh, so the truth is we got a long way to go to catch up with these people but I'm saying these people were super duper smart and when the Bible speaks of everything running down here we are down here near the end but believe me we're really run down even especially when it comes to smarts now there's no denying 
that if we hadn't shot down a UFO in Roswell, <laughs> if we didn't get a hold of our hands on transistor chips and back engineer a lot of the stuff that we discovered, we, would, we wouldn't even have cell phones. But everything in a cell phone today they didn't even have when we sent them into the moon, supposedly, during the Apollo space flights, and they had onboard computers. But this already is more than they had. So we are advancing quickly. And praise God, a few smart people are saying, we should need to slow down and think now. Are we really progressing, or maybe we're moving in the wrong direction? Of course, you know, the latest thing is they're talking about more and more how, oh, wow, we can't live without all these computers and all this high technology. And we're getting to a point where now it's being talked about quite common in the media where maybe uh, we need to move into this realm of transhumanism, they call it, transhumanism. Maybe we need to, we're going to become more and more dependent on the computer. We're going to become dependent on the computer. Right now, everybody's got to be walking around with one. Everybody's got to have one. And it's so cute. I heard the story of a Jewish girl that visited a Catholic cathedral. And she was really impressed with all the people that were there, including all the young people that were there. And uh, she saw them all there with their bowed heads and seemingly in a state of worship and reverence, you know. And she was wondering about it. And so she walked over to the aisle and began to walk into the back row and look. And, she seen, oh no, the reason they all had their heads about it, they were all there on their computers, exactly, texting away, you know. And uh, had nothing to do with God or the, the scene or the worshiping of the people in the cathedral. That's about the truth of it. And so the talk is now, oh yeah, well we can put a chip in you. Wouldn't it be great if you could just have your cell phone mounted right here under your skin, you know. And maybe we can put a chip in your brain, you know, and you'd be much smarter. And then there, and here's the temptation. They're going to come along pretty soon and say, well, boy, your baby's okay, but now it could really excel if you'd let us put a little nano chip and they could become a great composer, a great musician. Wouldn't you like to have that? And you say, no, 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 I don't want you to do that to my kid, make him into some monster, some hybrid. Because, see, the truth is, though, all these ships can be hacked. <laughs> you want to take that gamble? And the pressure is going to come on you. Well, if all the other moms are doing it, well, how's your kid going to keep up? See, and so this is what they use against us. You know, the peer pressure. See, we're headed somewhere with all this. Mm -hmm. And praise God, some of the fellows are getting smart enough to say, "Well, just well, maybe, uh, maybe this is an agenda." Number one, we wouldn't even have this stuff if it hadn't been discovered because we found it from somebody else. Well, what if those somebody else are influencing us to where now we're even thinking it would be perfectly okay and normal to insert these things in us because it fits the devil's agenda. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? See? So what if we could live 900 years? How smart would you be in 900 years? And that's the, that's the next thing they're doing to sell this technology to us. They say, well, man, we can insert some chips in you, and we can really help you, and we can extend your life here and extend your life. And then here's the latest thing. Oh, no, the latest thing. Oh, no, no, no. There's a website you can go to, and they'll start recording everything you say and everything you do and everybody you know, and you can put it all in there. And they say, and someday we'll take all your information, we'll put it in a robot, and then you can be... A robot, and you can be you, in, and you will be a robot. Image of the beast. You'll be, you know, it's called AI, artificial intelligence. They're saying we're getting this stuff so under control. See, we're getting this stuff so under control that we may be able to download you into so you could live forever. Wouldn't you like to live in the real physical world forever? This is what they are saying. This is what they're trying to tempt everybody with, see? We can get away from God and away from the Bible. I mean, Adam lived 900 years, he died. Seth lived 900 years, 905 years. 
and begat Enos. And then Seth lived after he begat Enos 807 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enos were 912 years and he died. Wow. He died, he died, he died. Well, see, maybe this is the alien agenda, quote unquote. Who's put it in our leaders' heads to think that we should do this, accept this technology, and put it inside of us? So then that's allowed some of the scientists to even think further. Now stop, think with me. Here you got a UFO, it's here one minute, and shoo, it takes off, and they can figure out how fast it's going. This UFO leaves our atmosphere at 3,500 miles an hour. Okay. What would you be if you were inside that craft and it took off at 3,500 miles an hour? You'd be nothing but a grease spot on the wall. <laughs> you cannot do that. You're a human being. You aren't made to endure such speeds. So that's caused a lot of these scientists to think it through and realize maybe these gray aliens fooling around aren't human and aren't any right. kind of humanoid either. Maybe there's some kind of a hybrid robot that could handle speeds like 3,500 miles an hour. And yet when they do fool with humans and these people are abducted by them, they're so rough. They're rough with them. They don't have any sympathy. They don't have any heart. And maybe that's what they're looking for. They would like to somehow download themselves and program themselves into us and fool with our DNA and stuff to make somebody or make a race of something so that it could have their intelligence but have our soul. Because they don't have soul. And everything in the universe really is tending to random and it does eventually run down. Though again, with computer chips, we can make things click and clack to where it takes a long time for them to run down. But this is where the fight is. It's the oldest fight in the world between God and the devil. Right. And God naturally in his universe, these scientists are finally realizing, I don't know if you read the headlines, but yesterday I had a headline come across my internet was talking about how this sure enough there was some old uh, scientist and he had this equation figured out with physics a proven God and he would proved there was a God but he never told anybody <laughs> so these other two computer uh, mathematicians said they got to working on it and sure enough they said this guy has and they, they doubled it and said this is a fact folks there is a God they now scientifically prove that there's a God. So I'm thinking, man, I want to make this into a track, even because it needs to be made into a track. Because these evolutionists want to say there is no God, but no, it's been scientifically proven by mathematicians there is a God, and that's wonderful. See? But some of us could have told them that a long time ago to save a lot of money. <laughs> See, some of us are way ahead of the pack, but anyhow, and. Uh, and see, they finally realized, look, in the beginning was what? Before God spoke it into existence, before everything that we know is time was here, we know well, there was God. And the scientists are now calling that God-verse. See, there was the God-verse. But then he put it on, and we're all here, and we're in it. But this is just a little bit of yeah. what it really is. That's right. And someday it'll be gone. And then that circuit, second law of thermodynamics, sure as sure there is a law of that everything's tending to random, everything's running down. Well, what would be the opposite of that? What would be God? Or nothing runs down. Amen. He started at one point, and it's been running down ever since. But it'll run down until he finally wraps it all up and rolls it all up like a scroll. <laughs> so, it's fascinating to be alive today and even see where even the scientific yes. world's finally coming back full circle and many people are realizing wow the Bible is right <clears throat> and so these men lived and they died Enos lived 90 years and begat Canaan verse 9 says and Enos lived after he begat Canaan 815 years and begat sons and daughters and all the days of Enos were 905 years and he died and Canaan lived after or lived 70 years and beget Mahaliel. And Canaan lived after he beget Mahaliel 840 years and beget sons and daughters. 
and all the days of Canaan were eight, uh, 910 years, and he died. And Mahaliel lived 65 years, and we get Jared, and Mahaliel lived after we get Jared 830 years, and we get sons and daughters. And all the days of Mahaliel were 890 and five years, and he died. And Jared lived 160 and two years, and he begat Enoch. And, e and Jared lived after he begat Enoch 800 years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were 960 and two years, and he died. 21. And Enoch lived 60 and five years, and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah. Now that's a I love that verse because again, you might be able to go down your merry way and be the knucklehead you are, but the truth is, when you start bringing babies in this world, you should sober up, and, yeah. and your walk should be different, and you should re take realize with that responsibility that child bringing that child in the world, it's time to start walking with God, big boy. Amen. And that's what happened here with Enoch. Now, I'm 63, so I got two more years to go. But Enoch lived 65 years, and he finally had his first kid, Methuselah. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> and Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. So he's still a young whippersnapper compared to Adam. Or Seth, or some of these other men. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's only 300 years old. Now, what could you learn, man, if you could live 300 years? And then you're comparing notes with these other great men that got brains like scientists. I mean, easily they could fly around the world before the flood of Noah. Easily they could communicate. Easily they had lights. Easily they had communication systems. They had electricity. They understood all that stuff truth is they all understood it like another great brain once knew it and that's a guy by the name of Tesla we still are trying to figure out what he knew what he knew because the truth is even what they teach us today about electric it works so we're happy but they don't tell us they don't tell us all about it <coughs> there's lots of even the education we have a different way of even looking at electricity so that electricity don't serve us like it could have this is why Tesla was always fighting against Westinghouse and Edison and these other people. Because yes. they had a way, they wanted to keep it where they got made money off of it. And Tesla said, no, God made it, we should just let it go for free. Mm. Now Tesla had some odd beliefs. But because Tesla's system worked, this is why we say, and we know, that modern understanding of electric is limited. They saw the sun itself as a big hollow ball, and they see the earth itself as a big hollow ball. And because it's hollow, there is a friction, and there's so much electric in the universe, just like static when you've got wool socks on and you're walking over that nylon rug, and all of a sudden you touch the wall and, or touch the light switch or anything metal, bam, there's a big old spark. Well, there is a there is this static electricity in the air and Tesla believed that we should be able to just be able to light everybody's house for free just plug into this electric that's everywhere and see even the air is what it really is it's kind of a conductor of this electric and so he had a system and a way of tapping into all this stuff Tesla did and I've told you about this guy, Eric, whatever his name is, that he, he's still teaching and tapped into this because he teaches these old concepts. And uh, so we know that energy is out there and it's still accessible. But what it would have been like before the flood, mm -hmm. now that, of course, the canopy has fallen and now the system's running down, how much electric it had back in their day compared to how much electric's in the air today, it had to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you, what do you think would happen if all of a sudden we were overcome with a flood? And all of us, even over Mount Everest, it was, a, you know, the waters covered even Mount Everest, you know, 500 foot deep. 
Well, everything would be gone. Everything would be wiped off the earth. Yep. No wonder it's so hard to find all these before the flood cities and stuff. It would be wiped out, including all their cell phones. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to find this stuff. It would be gone forever. So verse 21, Enoch lived 65 years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. It says he was not, for God took him. So we've heard of astronauts and cosmonauts. Mm -hmm. So Enoch was the first was not because God took him. Amen. Mm -hmm. God took him. Amen, brother. So there's the first abduction in the Bible. Amen. Rapture. He was not. God took him. So let's see what happened to his boy. And Methuselah lived 180 and 7 years and begat Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech 780 and 2 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were 969 years. So 969, that's the oldest man that lived in the Bible. He lived 969. We're happy to live 900. Or we're happy to live 96 years. 996 or 69. Oh, that's a lot. 969 years and he died. Now, we understand that, yes, when Methuselah died, it's when fi finally the flood hit. Right. And Lamech lived 100, 180 and two years and begat a son, and he called his name Noah. And Noah was the very first man born listed in the Bible that did not know Adam. Adam would have just died, and Noah was the first person born that would not get a chance to talk to Adam and ask him personally what was it like when God made you put, put us in the world. So Noah, as he heard all of his fathers and grandfathers and uncles speak, he had to take it all by faith. Right. When they told him everything about the Bible, told him about the star, told him about God and God's plan to redeem us from the serpent and the devil, Noah was the first one that had to believe by faith the whole story of creation. He called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. See? Mm -hmm. See, they recognized in this boy being born, God's promise to our great-grandpa Adam that he would surely die has finally happened because Adam is finally dead. But we have some comfort and some hope because now God had another boy born and it's Noah. So God must want the human race to keep going. And Lamech lived after he begat Noah 595 years and begat sons and daughters and all the days of Lamech were 770 and 7 years and he died. And Noah was 500 years old. And Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. And daughters were born unto them. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men. That they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. So, wow, here we go. Of course, Peter's going to say they're fallen angels. The Bible's going to indicate and hint at these things being fallen angels, these sons of God, choosing to take certain human women and have babies by them. And so all you got to do is just go to that computer and bunch in the cone heads of Peru. <laughs> and man, I'm telling you, this, these aliens that mess around with human women, 
one of the indicating things when these giants have been discovered, the Indians, like we told you, they're on, on Mount Graham in Arizona. And how the Indians said that's where the giants landed and came down into our valleys. And then we all had to fight them and resist them and kill them. And they were red-headed giants at that. Yep. Red-headed giants. Since there's an alarm going off, I got five minutes, Charity, fix this thing, okay. So, uh, the Indians had to kill them all. Because they said, because they kept messing with our kids and eating them, that's right. Cannibalism. And, um, and so of all things, that's where the Catholics have the federal government take that away from the Indians. And they build this seven-story telescope. And they're looking at Sirius, the dog star. And they're looking at certain places in space. And it's the Catholics that wrote a book. The Catholic priest that runs that observatory, he wrote a book saying that they're expecting somebody to come and land and they will be from outer space, they will be angels from God from outer space. And the Catholic so Church is bragging how we believe that we will baptize our mm -hmm. alien brothers, mm -hmm. quote unquote. Mm -hmm. What are they getting ready for? We're not talking about Peter Ruckman building a thing saying, we're talking about the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah. The Pope said he'd keep up. I mean, we all know that these fundamental Bible believing crazies that believe Genesis 6 is giants got to be screwballs, got to be on a lunatic fringe, of course, right? Yes. No, it's the Roman Catholic Church we're talking about, <laughs> which I would agree, I've always thought they were on the lunatic fringe. <laughs> but I'm saying, no, they end up being right on. Because this is the hour in which we're living. The Bible's coming true. Yeah, there's going to be ten buddies join the Antichrist, and he will anoint <coughs> them as one hour with the beast as kings. They'll have the power of kings, one hour with the beast. And there'll be ten of them. The Bible's very clear. Daniel chapter 2, how can you miss it? There's ten toes at the bottom of that idol. So while wow, we're living at this moment, where the, all this is fixing to be revealed to the world and unveil. But yet we've known about it for years. And happily joined the lunatic fringe. <laughs> <laughs> And yet we're right on the money. Like I said, we got major scientists finally coming to full circle yes. and realizing there is a God, that God existed and he's the one to put it all into being. And they finally recognize it and they talk about that time before the universe as the God verse. They say, well, what was before the Big Bang? And they say, well, no evolutionist wants to talk about it. But a lot of scientists are now saying, well, we'll talk about it and we'll tell it what it is. It's the God verse. Because it was just God. He was everything and everywhere. And the truth is, he still. But he did isolate a little subgroup of that to be where we're at and what we're doing. And then knocking on the thing called time. But with him, there is no time. And that's why the more you recognize that even in this world where we are locked in time, there still exists right here where we can't see it a supernatural world. Yes. To where, to where at. And Elijah and a Moses can step out of that world into our world and talk to Jesus about his death at Jerusalem and then Amen. go back into that world. Amen. So, wow, we got definitely where I want to be. <laughs> so let's have a word of prayer. Father, we're thankful for your word. Help us to believe it. Wow. Amen. 